Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Vertigo Tea Party and my DC Online informational video. In this video, I want to briefly talk about what exactly DC Online is and what it sets it apart from other MMOs, as well as I want to talk about the free to play model and the tier system that they use. So, what is DC Online? It's a superhero action based, massively multiplayer game set in the Surprise, surprise, DC Comics Universe. So if you haven't played any MMOs before, what an MMO is, a massively, massively multiplayer online game is, is you play a character, you level up, you do quests, but you can also do quests with other players. Other players are running around in the same world that you are, and you can either cooperate with them or you can fight with them in some cases. Now, since this is the DC Comics Universe, you're going to run into, fight, or do quests for various DC characters like Wonder Woman, Poison Ivy, Batman, Superman, the Joker, Harley Quinn, and so on and so forth. It's available both on the PC and the PS3. So what makes DC Online different? What makes it fun? First off, the combat is different than a lot of other MMOs. It's action-based. What that means is you actively dodge, actively block, and it's just more, it's hard to describe, but it's, there's more action involved from using various weapons to combining in, using your powers. You can pick up objects in the environment like uh, big trash cans or explosive barrels and throw them or hit your enemies with them. You can encase your enemies in ice and then throw them across the map if you want to. It's it's very interesting, and if you're coming from a traditional MMO background like WoW or EverQuest, something like that, this combat's going to be a lot different. Different Traveling is also a lot of fun. You zip around the city with either flight or acrobatics or super speed. You get to fly over buildings or fly between them, run up the side of them. It's just a lot of fun to travel in this game. For DC fans, it's a no-brainer. Because you get to actually live in the DC world. It has both Gotham City and Metropolis. I forgot the name of it for a second. And again, you get to interact with a lot of DC characters. So again, for you DC fans or you just general comic book fans, this is a no-brainer. You should definitely check it out. Now, DC Online is free to play. But what does that mean exactly? You can download it for free, again, either on PC or PS3. And play it straight out of the start gate. You don't need to pay anything. However, there are restrictions on what you can do based on the tier that you're on. There are three tiers. Legendary, Premium, and Free. And I've got the chart up right now. You can actually go to dcuniverseonline.com slash free if you want to see it yourself. I'll also put a link down below to see the different tiers. And I want to go through the various aspects of what makes the tiers different. And I want to rate personally what I think, how important that is. And if it's something you're going to really notice, or if it's going to be something that you might have a hard time dealing with. So first of all, legendary is if you're paying the monthly subscription, $15 a month, if you pay $15 a month, you're legendary and you get everything under that first column. Premium is means that you have spent $5 or more at all. This is not $5 a month. This is $5 at all. So if you bought the game at release or if you buy a DLC or a uh, add-on or what have you that's $5, you automatically get premium forever. Then there's the free tier. In other words, you've just downloaded it. You haven't spent a dime. So again, let's go ahead and go through the various columns. And I want to, again, talk about what they mean in terms of your day-to-day -day playing and how, how much it's going to affect you. First off, in the monthly loyalty reward, the only one that gets that is Legendary. You get 500 Station Cash, and I'll talk about Station Cash in a little bit, but Station Cash, in a nutshell, is real-life money. Think of Station Cash as real-life money. So for free, you get 500 Station Cash, which is equivalent to roughly $5. Or 500 loyalty points. I'm not sure what the loyalty points are for. but uh, th So basically, if, if you use Station Cash a lot, you can think of this as getting it for $10 a month since you get $5 a month for free. The other, the other tiers don't get anything. To me, that's not a big deal. 
Game updates, they all get it for free, so we can skip right on past that. The DLC expansion packs. DLC expansion pack. DLC stands for downloadable, downloadable content. There's been, I see, five DLC since release. If you're legendary, you get access to all of them. What does that mean? That means that certain powers and certain weapons you can only get if you have access to that DLC. For example, the hard light power set like Green Lantern uses came with the Fight for the Light DLC. You can only make a hard light character if either you have legendary access or if you bought that DLC separately. Does that make sense? So if I'm a premium member and let's say, you know what, I really want to make a Green Lantern or a Sinestro Corps character, but I don't want to get a monthly subscription, you can pay the $10 buy the Fight for the Light DLC, and make your uh, Hard Light character. So this, this tier can matter over the long run. However, if you're just trying it out for the first time, or you're just playing very casually, there's plenty of other power sets for you to try out. Monthly replay badge grant. Uh, this is, if I remember correctly, this actually lets you replay missions and again I don't want to get to it deep right now but in a nutshell that lets you get a little bit more loot a little bit more quickly not a big change here again if, unless you want to play a lot and gear up quickly then this can matter but again you can buy replay badges separately with station cash even though again I'm not sure how much they are off the top of my head Promethean lockboxes Promethean lockboxes drop randomly from mobs and inside of it they contain special loot. Now with a legendary, you can get unlimited unlocks, but the other two, you have to purchase the keys. Now I have only gotten three in several hours of play. So to me, this isn't a huge deal. But again, if you get one and you really want to see what's inside, you can purchase the keys. Uh, character slots, 16 for legendary, six for premium, two for free. And with most of these things, you can buy additional character slots. So even if you're legendary and you want to, let's say you want 17, you want 18 characters, you can still buy additional character slots. But 16 is a hell of a lot. I mean, I've known some altaholics in my time, but 16 is a hell of a lot of character slots. Again, six for premium, two for free. Two for free is a little restrictive. But again, if you're just starting this game for the first time, two should be plenty. Maybe just get up to like level 10, level 15, make another character. And if that's not enough, you can delete one, create another one, just to see uh, if if you like a different power set better. So this is not a huge limitation in my opinion. And six, in my opinion, is plenty for of character slots, and they're relatively cheap to buy more. Inventory slots. This is how much room you have in your inventory to carry items you find. Like when you defeat enemies, you get items, and these items go in your bag. So 63 inventory slots, that's a hell of a lot for legendary, 42 for premium, and then 28 for free. Now, as a premium member myself, I didn't have a lot of problems with 42 as long as I made sure to sell. 28 is pretty darn low. Uh, this might be annoying because your inventory fills up, then you have to go back and sell. So it's not terrible, but it can be annoying. Uh, auction slots, auction slots means how many slots of items you can put up to sell to other players. So let's say I found this cool item that I can't use, but maybe another player would want. I put it on the auction house. I put a price on it, and if somebody wants it, they buy it, and then I get the money. For legendary, you get 20 slots. For uh, premium, you get five. Free gets none. Again, if you're just starting off, this isn't going to matter especially because of the currency limit, and I'll go over that in a minute. But the not being able to sell stuff in the auction house, not a big deal for new players. Uh, you're not going to be making a lot of money anyway, probably that way, unless you're selling crafting uh, crafting things that you find. So I, I wouldn't stress, uh, worry about that too much over the, over the short term. Bank slots. Bank slots uh, is where you can put items that you don't want to keep on your character. So let's say I've got some crafting items and I don't want to carry them on me all the time. I just sell them in my bank and I can access them again later on. 
48 slots, bank slots for legendary, 24 bank slots for premium, 12 for free. So this isn't too bad, but it kind of plays into the inventory slots, right? So let's say you fill up on your slots as a free player because you're at 28, you're going to fill up faster. Well, you say, okay, well, I don't want to sell all this stuff. I want to keep it, so I'll just start throwing it into my bank. Well, now you're going to fill your bank up faster, and you you end up having inventory problems that build upon themselves. Again, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue unless you're a big pack rat, but it can be annoying, and it's unfortunate because those things kind of create a domino effect of annoyingness. Trading, this is talking about trading with other characters. You can trade items and cash with other characters and the legendary. With premiums, you can only trade items. And with free, you can't trade other players at all. Again, I don't see this as being an issue. The only problem I could see is if you wanted a free subscription and you had a friend who wanted to give you some money to help you get started. But I I really think that's mostly a a non-issue. In-game currency. So, currency uh, is cash, actually. It's called cash, but we'll just call it in-game currency to separate that from real cash. Uh, In-game currency is just money that you get in-game from doing quests, selling items to vendors, things of that nature. You use it to, you know, respec, repair your armor, buy things in the auction house, things like that. Uh, In Legendary, you have unlimited currency. In Premium, you have 2,000 max. And then for free, you get 1,500 max currency. So does that mean that if I'm a free, if if I'm a free member, Does that mean I can only carry 1,500 cash total? No, that's not the case. What happens is, if you hit your max, any additional money goes into what they call an escrow. So let's say, just for example, I'm a free member. I have zero money. I sell $2,000 worth of items. I get $1,500 spendable, and then the extra $500 will go into escrow. I cannot touch the escrow amount Unless either A, I go to premium or legendary, or B, I buy something from the Sony marketplace, which allows me to access my escrow money. And buying things from the Sony marketplace, everything costs station cash, which, as I talked about before, station cash equals real life money. One station cash is uh, one penny, I believe. So something that's 500 station cash is $5. Keep that in mind. It's I didn't have a huge problem with this until I hit 30 and wanted to start gearing out my character. And then the items cost so much money that I would go through my normal cash. And even though I had it in my escrow, I couldn't buy those items because it's the money was in my escrow. One way I've found to get around this, if this becomes a problem for you, is to always keep a few trash items around. Again, when you defeat enemies, You'll pick up random items that you don't want, either because they're worse than what you're wearing or you you can't use it for your class, what have you. Just sell most of it, but keep a few in the bank or in your inventory. So if something like this happens where you have to repair or you have to buy a, a, a lot of things and you run out of money, you can go to the bank, grab those items, sell them to a vendor again, and you'll have money to spend on whatever you need to. So again, this is not really a big issue it's annoying and i find it to be honestly i find it to be a ridiculous restriction it's very arbitrary Uh, it's more annoying than anything but again if you plan ahead it's not terrible the big problem that i've heard is that if you want to buy anything off the auction house this severely limits you because most items are significantly more than 2000 so if you want to get to the point where you're purchasing things from the auction house You'll either need to get legendary or you'll have to buy a pass from the the, mar- the station store that will allow you to access your escrow. So uh, this is, in my opinion, the dumbest of the restrictions because of things like that. Anyway, so chat restrictions under legendary, there's none. Uh, premium, you're limited to proximity voice chat and six text chat messages for 30 seconds. And then free is limited to six text chat messages for 30 seconds. This, I don't even consider a negative. I have never used the voice chat. 
This might be useful for some folks. If you're in a guild or a league, as it's called in DC Online, you can just use Ventrilo or TeamSpeak or whatever people are using these days. Uh, so that I consider to be a non-issue. Uh, sending mail. This is not receiving mail, but sending it. Under Legendary, of course, you can send anything. Premium, you can send text and items. Free, you can send text only. Again, this is pretty much a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. Vault tickets. Vault tickets are a ticket that allows you to go to an instance, a solo instance. And what a solo instance is, in a nutshell, is your own private little area. And these vaults are basically you destroy things and get items. You get money, you get random gear. So that's what the vault tickets are for. Legendary, you get one free ticket per day. Premium, you get one ticket every three days. And free, you get one ticket per week. So what are the tickets for? The ticket means how often you can go to the vault. So if you're a legendary, you can go to that vault once a day. If you're premium, you can go, excuse me, once every three days. Not a huge deal. I mean, the free money and the free gear is nice, but not not really huge. Not thing, something I would uh, worry about. Player leagues. Again, leagues are the equivalent of guilds from other MMOs. And what a league is, if you're new to MMOs, it's basically a grouping of people you can talk together in your own private league chat. Leagues will have names like the Heroes of Gotham or whatever. And you'll see your little guild tag or your league tag over your head so people know what league you're in. And again, you can talk to other players in your league easily. It's basically just a way for like-minded people to get together. So, Legendary can form a league or join one. And both Premium and Free cannot create one, but they can join. Again, non-issue as far as I'm concerned. So overall, what I would suggest, so if you're a new player, here's what I would suggest. I would say go with the free to start with. Make a character, maybe make two characters. Try the different power sets. Maybe try the, one of the two different factions. Uh, and one thing I forgot to mention, there's two factions. There's the heroes and the, there's the villains. The heroes and villains cannot group together. I'm not sure if they can talk, but they cannot group and do things together. Um, other than that, and obviously Heroes and Villains determines what quest you get. So if you're a hero, you're going to get quests from Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman. If you're a villain, you're going to get quests from the Joker and Lex Luthor. So if you're a new player, stick with the free-to-play. Make a few characters. Try it out. See if this is a type of game for you. You should be able to figure out by the time you're level 10, level 15, somewhere in there that if this is going to be a game you're going to want to play much or if this is going to be something you load up maybe two, three, four times a month. Mess around with, fly around the city, beat up a few bad guys or good guys, and you're done. However, if you're going to play this game at any anything serious, and I'm talking maybe even once a week, I would very strongly get the, the premium. Reason being, it's only $5. And again, you spend $5, your premium forever. You don't have to spend $5 forever. So you could spend $5 on one station cash item, whatever it is, additional character slot, escrow access, doesn't matter. Just spend $5 and your premium. It opens up a lot. And again, it's only 5 bucks, so it's really hard to argue that if you like the game at all, to not get premium. And Legendary... You'll know if you want Legendary or not, quite frankly, uh, because you'll you'll love the game. You'll be playing it all the time. So I think Legendary is a no, no-brainer. Now, the one big question, and this video is way longer than I intended, and I apologize about that, but there was a lot to cover. One big question, though, that I see is, well, I want the expansion packs. I want to be able to make a light character. I want to make electricity character, which are normally only accessible if you have access to the DLC. So should I buy the DLC or should I get a monthly sub? It's going to depend on your, your scenario. Here's the problem. All the DLC are 10 bucks each. And right now there's five DLC with a sixth coming. I believe I have that right. So if you wanted all the DLC, that's 50 bucks. So it, again, it just depends on how much you're going to play. It's, I find it very difficult to justify buying the DLCs without getting a legendary. 
Well, if you buy the DLCs and have Legendary, there's something wrong in your head. Because you automatically get the DLCs from having the Legendary. But I like if you wanted to be premium, I, I again, I have a hard time justifying buying all that DLC for just, and then canceling your subscription. Because it's 50 bucks. Now, granted, that's like, what, three, I see four. That's four or five months, uh, including the new DLC coming out. Four or five months of subscription. So I guess you could argue that, well, I'm going to play this a lot. I'm going to play this six months plus. So I, it's okay if it's legit for me to buy the DLC. All right. That makes sense. But honestly, I don't think that's going to include a lot of folks. So I really don't think it's worthwhile for the vast majority of people to buy the DLC unless there's one specific power set you want. Like if you just really want the hard light because you're a huge fan of Green Lantern or you're a, a huge Sinistro Core fan and that's all you want, then yeah, sure, buy the $10 DLC. Not only do you get those powers, you're automatically marked as premium. So kind of killing two birds with one stone there. And it is only 10 bucks. So anyway. This went on far longer than I intended, but hopefully this has been useful for you guys. Please leave questions if I didn't answer your question below, and I'll try to answer it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.